Hi guys, Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Nathan Erd Emanuel Simondal. I am a student from CPE 31A1. I am a regular student taking CPE as a discipline and I am going to report this this one entitled microprocessors and microcontrollers. Now the question is, what are they? So to start with, microprocessor is used for control tasks. Additional chips are necessary. For example, of that is memory device. And the main processing component of a computer system or microprocessor executes mathematical and logical operations such as additions, subtractions, moving numbers from one place to another, and comparing two numbers. Frequently referred to as a processor or central processing unit or CPU or logic chip. Kapag ang computer ay inon, essentially the brain or the engine of the device that gets things moving. It is programmable, multifunctional device with all of the CPU central processing unit features incorporated onto a single integrated circuit. So, how does a processor work? Based on instructions kept in the memory, a microprocessor accepts binary data as input, processes it, and then outputs the results. The microprocessor's ALU, or sometimes called arithmetical and logical unit, control unit, and register array are used to process the data. Through a collection of registers that serve as temporary fast access memory locations, the register array processes the data. The control unit regulates how data and instructions move throughout the system. So moving on, what are the benefits of a microprocessor and why a microprocessor is good? Well, to define that, microprocessors are used by a variety of devices besides computers, though these days, microprocessors are used in everything from cars to home appliances to cell phones. And these are just a few of the factors that make a microprocessor so popular. Now, the benefits of them are, first one, they don't cost a lot. They are inexpensive to create because they make use of integrated circuit technology. And it indicates that the system's cost can be significantly decreased by using a microprocessor. Second one is they are fast. Modern processors can run at extraordinary fast speeds. They can carry out millions of instructions per second thanks to the technology used to create them. The third one is they consume little power. Due to the use of metal oxide semiconductor technology in the production of microprocessors, their power consumption is significantly lower than that of the other processor types. As a result, microprocessor equipped gadgets use substantially less energy. And then another benefit of them are they are portable. Devices using microprocessors can be made to portable because of how compact they are and how little power they use, like smartphones. They are reliable as well. Microprocessors' failure rates are very low as semiconductor technology is used to make them. They are versatile. As long as the code is modified, the same microprocessor chip can be used for a variety of applications, which greatly increases its versatility. Now, what are the common terms used? The common terms used are some technologies that you might not be familiar with when it comes to talking about microprocessors, their function, and other topics. Typical terminology used in relation to microprocessors include the following. First one, word length. It is the maximum number of bits that a processor can process at once of the, or the number of bits that are present in the internal data bus of the processor. For example, an 8-bit processor will have an 8-bit data bus, 8-bit registers, and will execute 8 bits at a time. Instruction set. The collection of instructions that a microprocessor can comprehend is known as an instruction set. In essence, it serves as the interface between hardware and software. Cache memory. The data or instructions that the software or program regularly refers to while operating are kept in the cache memory. So it allows the CPU to access data more quickly than from a standard RAM, which helps to boost the operation's total speed, clock speed. It is the rate at which a microprocessor can carry out instruction, usually expressed in units like megahertz and gigahertz. It is measured in hertz. Bus, the collection of conductors that transfer data, address, or control information to the various components of the CPU is referred to as bus. The data bus, address bus, and control bus are the three main buses that make up most microprocessors. Now, what are the categories of microprocessors? The following are various categories into which microprocessors can be divided. Complex instruction set computer. 
The antithesis of RISC microprocessors are CISC microprocessors. They aim to cut down on the amount of instruction needed for each software. The amount of cycles per instruction is not taken into account. Now, reduce instruction set computer or RISC. RISC microprocessors have a wider range of applications than those with a narrower range of instructions. A specific circuit is needed to load and process the data before instructions can be carried out in a processor. Based on word length, the size of a microprocessor can be determined by the internal data bus or the amount of bits it can process simultaneously, which is known as the word length. A microprocessor can categorize as, as 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, or 64-bit based on the number of words it contains. Special Purpose Processors some microprocessors are designed to carry out particular tasks. For instance, a transputer in a transistor computer, a microprocessor with its own local memory. Co processors are used in conjunction with a primary processor. The microprocessor was a turning point for modern computer. Why? It's because CPUs were formerly very large. Designers didn't start attempting to incorporate CPU features into microprocessors until units of the late 1960s. The home computer was made possible by the microprocessor's successful development. Our computer's ability to perform tasks like text editing, multimedia display, computing, and internet connectivity is due to general purpose microprocessors. They have been essential to the development of daily electronics, including appliances, smartphones, and more. Due to how quick, compact, and energy efficient they are, since the microprocessors essentially alter the course of history, it is important to comprehend what it is and how it works. Now let's go to microcontrollers. Microcontrollers are small integrated circuits that control a single process on a single chip. A typical microcontroller has a CPU, mem memory, and input-output peripherals. Microcontrollers, also known as embedded controllers or microcontroller units, MCU, can be found in a variety of devices, including vending, vending machine, robotics, office equipment, medical devices, office machines. Essentially, the straightforward mini personal computers without a complicated front-end operating system that are used to operate minor aspects of larger components. Now, how do micro microcontrollers work? To control a single device function, a microcontroller is integrated into a system accomplishes this by utilizing its core CPU to evaluate data that it receives from its I.O. peripherals. An automobile, for instance, might contain a very large number of microcontrollers that manage a variety of internal systems, including the anti-lock brake system, traction control, fuel injection, and suspension control. To inform the appropriate actions, all the microcontrollers communicate with one another. Some may just interface with another microcontrollers, while others may connect to a more sophisticated center computer within the vehicle. They use their I.O. peripherals to send and receive data, process data, and carry out the task for which it was intended. Now, what are the elements of microcontroller? The core elements of microcontroller are the following. The processor or the CPU. The processor is the brain of the gadget and is supposed to be a CPU. They interpret and react to several commands that control how the microcontroller operates. This calls for doing elementary logic, input-output, and arithmetic operations. Memory, the data that a processor receives and uses to carry out instructions that it has been designed to carry out is stored in a microcontroller's memory. There are two types of memory. Program memory. When we say program memory, it maintains the information throughout time about the instruction the CPU executes. Data memory, which is required for temporary data storage while the instructions are being executed. While the processor, memory, and I.O. peripherals are the defining elements of the microprocessor, there are other elements that are frequently included. The term I.O. peripherals itself simply refers to supporting components that interface with the memory and processor. There are many supporting components that can be classified as peripherals. Having some manifestation of an I.O. peripheral is elemental to a microprocessor because they are the mechanism through which the processor is applied. So when we say I.O. peripheral, they are processor connections to the outside world and is made through its input and output devices. Information is received by the input ports and sent as binary data to the CPU. Other supporting elements of a microcontroller include analog to digital converter or ADC. 
known as the ADC, transforms analog signals into digital controllers. They enables the microcontroller central CPU to communicate with external analog devices like sensors, digital to analog converter. The processor at the heart of the microcontroller can send its outgoing signals to external analog components thanks to the ADC, the ADC, which serves as the opposite corpus of the ADC. System bus. The system bus serves as a connecting link between each microcontroller component, serial port, one type of input-output connection that enables the microcontroller to interface to external components is the serial port. Microcontroller features. Microcontrollers are made with enough onboard memory so they can connect to sensors and on other parts directly. Simple 4-bit and 8-bit processors are available as well as more complicated 32-bit or 64-bit processors. Microcontrollers architecture can be based on the Harvard, on the Harvard architecture or Von Neumann architecture, both offering different methods of exchanging data between the processor and memory. With Harvard architecture, the, the data bus and the instructions are separate, allowing for simultaneous transfers of data and instructions to and from the memory. Microcontroller processors can be based on complex instruction set computing or CISC or reduced instruction set processing or RA, RISC. So def definitely CISC generally has so definitely, CISC generally has around 80 instructions, while our ISC has about 30, as well as more addressing modes, 12 to 24 compared to RISC's 3 to 5. CISC can be easier to implement and has more efficient memory use, but it can have performance degradation due to the higher number of clock cycles uh, that needed to be executed. The applications of microcontroller. The, um, they are utilized in a wide range of businesses and applications, including building automation, manufacturing, robotics, automated lighting, smart energy, Internet of Things, deployments, and home and office. The simplest microcontroller facilitates the operation of uh, electromechanical system found in everyday convenience items such as ovens, refrigerators, toasters, mobile devices, EPUBs. Um, video game systems, um, what else? Televisions and law and water system. They are also common in office machines such as photocopiers, scanners, fax machines, and as well as printers. Oh uh, no, smart more smart, and as well as smart meters, and as well as smart meters, ATMs, and security system. Um, there are more sophisticated micro. Controllers perform critical functions in, air, in aircraft, spacecraft, ocean-going vessels, vehicles, medical and life support system, as well as in robots. Medical scenarios microcontrollers can regulate the operations of an artificial heart, kidney, or other organs. They can also be instrumental in the fashion of, of prosthetic devices. Controllers versus microprocessors. Controllers versus microprocessors. As chip density and complexity have become relatively in in and inexpensive to produce and microcontrollers have incorporated more general computer types of capability the gap between the microcontrollers and microprocessors has become less apparent microcontrollers are less expensive and use less power than microprocessors microprocessors do not have built-in ram read only memory ram or other peripherals on the chip but rather attach these with their pins a microprocessor can be considered the heart of the computer system, whereas a microcontroller can be considered the heart of an embedded system. Choosing the right microcontroller, there are a number of technology and business considerations to keep in mind when choosing a microcontroller to a project. Beyond cost, it is important to consider the maximum speed amount of RAM or ROM, number of types of inputs and output pins on an MCU as well as the power consumptions and development constraints support. Be, support. be sure to ask questions such as what hardware peripherals are required, are external communications needed, what architecture should be used, what sort of community and resources are available for the microcontroller, and what is the market availability of the microcontroller. Um, again, microcontrollers versus microprocessors, they are 
Generally speaking, however, microcontrollers can be said to operate effectively on their own with a strict connection to sensors and actuators in contrast to microprocessors, which are built to maximize compute power on the chip and have internal bus connections to supporting hardware like uh, uh, RAM and serial ports. Uh, simply explained, desktop computers use microprocessors, whereas coffee makers use microcontrollers. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leighton Earl Emmanuel Sibondal, and this is submitted to Engineer Rodrigo Calapan, CPE as Discipline. Happy New Year, everyone. God bless.